My name is uh, Patrick Kamau Kamure and I welcome you to today's class. Uh, today's lesson, uh, subject that we are supposed to look at, is about public finance and taxation. Now, in the public finance and taxation, uh, we are going to look at the topic of capital allowances, which is also called the investment allowance. So, uh, when you talk of the capital allowance or investment allowance, it's good to make it very clear from the word go that this is a precursor to another topic that we are going to look at in a while. And I'm going to show you how it is connected to this topic of the taxation of the business income. Now, it's good to note that the capital allowance, uh, as we compute it and in relation to the taxation, is usually used in place of something we call depreciation. Now, depreciation, you used to use it when you are doing your financial accounting or financial reporting. Now, when you are being taught about financial accounting and financial reporting, you are being taught to be an accountant. And now here, we are teaching you on how to become a tax person. So, uh, for you to be able to connect, let us start from where you are using the depreciation in financial accounting and financial reporting. Uh, you remember this, um, you used to be given some information when you are doing your financial accounting and financial reporting, and uh, you used to be told, by prepare the profit and loss account or prepare the income statement. And when you are being told that way, you used to be given some information like sales, purchases, incomes, expenses. Then this is how you used to arrange your information uh, to, prepare, uh, to prepare the income statement or the profit and loss account. Here, you used to come here and um, have the name of the business. Let us call this business ABC limited and then you used to come and say you want to determine the income statement income statement stroke profit and loss account profit and loss account so for the period for the period ended you used to indicate let's say 31st of december 20, you indicate there. You used to come and have, if you are given the sales, you write the sales here. Items are given, let's say, in shillings. So you used to come and post your sales there. And then you used to raise cost of sales. And if you remember, although I don't want us to go to, into details, when you are getting the cost of sales, you used to say, let's say, opening stock, Plus purchases, less closing stock, minus drawings of the stocks by the owner of the business, and then you used to get the cost of sales. Which, when you, you took the sales minus the cost of sales, you used to get the gross profit. The gross profit there. And once you get the gross profit, you used to add in, uh, incomes, other incomes. You used to call them other incomes. Other incomes, these incomes used to be discount receipt, come and place it there, uh, investment incomes, investment incomes, you used to come and place it there, among other incomes that you could have been given, and then you used to less expenses. The expenses you used to deduct were like electricity, expenses, you used to come and deduct them there, salary and wages, you used to come and deduct it there, the rent expense, You used to come and deduct it there, among other expenses. But I want to remind you of one expense, and that is where we are today. The reason why we are doing this, and the capital allowance or investment allowance. Remember, 
if you are given, if you are told that the business purchased, purchased motor vehicle. I want to write it here first. Motor vehicle. And they purchased motor vehicle for 10 million. Now remember, when the business purchased a motor vehicle, they are incurring an expense, you know. They paid the 10 million. So this is an expense to the business. They have spent money. Uh, being an expense, I'm very sure if you remember, you didn't used to say, you didn't used to say that because it's an expense, you come and deduct it here. That is not what you used to do. In financial accounting and in financial reporting, what you used to ask yourself is, this is a fixed asset. Fixed asset, when you purchase it, it assists you to run the business in the long term. So you used to ask yourself, how long am I supposed to depreciate this motor vehicle? And the depreciation of that motor vehicle is the one that you used to come and bring it here. Not the whole cost of the motor vehicle just because they have purchased the, the motor vehicle. So if, for example, you are told that the motor vehicle was being depreciated at the rate of 10% per annum every year, then that means that every year they were supposed to take 10% of 10 million. And that translates to 1 million. So once you determine that depreciation of 1 million, in this case, you used to come and bring it in the income statement and say, uh, I have another expense, which is the depreciation of the motor vehicle. And now since we have determined it's 1 million, you used to bring it here, 1 million. And once you do that, you used to get the net profit or loss of the business there and that is how you used to do it now that was the financial accounting financial reporting when you are being taught to be a financial accountant now we are looking at the taxation now we are going to realize in our next topic that at some moment will be required to prepare the same statement but the profit that will be getting down here won't be called just the net profit or the net loss actually we are going to realize that that net profit that it used to get is usually called net accounting profit or net accounting loss why accounting the name accounting it means that it was being prepared by accountant so in taxation we normally for it net taxable net taxable profit or loss that is the profit or loss that's supposed to be subjected to tax so now when we get there when we will be getting the net taxable profit or loss instead of net accounting profit or loss we will realize this depreciation that you used to have is no longer required is not the one that is supposed to be deducted here we will not an item like a motor vehicle, you are supposed to compute something called the capital allowance. We used to have, uh, we are supposed to comp compute capital allowance or investment allowance. Of which case we are going to realize, for the motor vehicle, the capital allowance rate is supposed to be 25%. So you take 25% of the fixed asset like motor vehicle, 10 million, and that tells you that we have 2.5 million. So now, instead of taking the depreciation here, when we are getting the net taxable operating, uh, taxable profit or loss, we will bring, we will come and bring the capital allowance. Depreciation is not allowable. Capital allowance for the same motor vehicle. See now, it is not one million as to the way the accountant had determined. Now we have two point five million. Is the one that you come and deduct there. So now we want to see, this is just one fixed asset, the motor vehicle, of which case you, claim, uh, you determine the capital allowance the way you have determined, so that you can come and deduct it here. How about in case you have other assets, like you have the furniture and fittings, you have the buildings, you have the computers, you have other items that are used in the business, and which are supposed to assist the business in the, in the long term. So how do you normally claim the 
capital allowance on them instead of depreciation which was being determined when you are de uh, preparing the net accounting the net accounting profit so that is where now we are today about this topic of the capital allowance or investment investment allowance so i hope you have understood it very clearly that the capital allowance or investment allowance is used instead of the depreciation because depreciation is for accountant not for the tax person and it is usually computed in relation to the fixed assets fixed assets like motor vehicle furniture and fittings the buildings the computers and such so now coming back coming back to the capital allowance we have said it is usually on fixed asset and we have seen we have lot range of the fixed assets it's good to know as per it we have said here about motor vehicle of 25 percent now we have other rates which are applicable on other assets now when you are claiming the capital allowance we usually have four rates which we are supposed to use when you are claiming capital allowance on fixed assets i'm going to list those rates here and then we are going to look at those items that we normally give the capital allowance at it, those rates that we're going to list. Like the first one, which are the items do we give the capital allowance at that rate? You go to the second uh, uh, rate, which items do we normally give capital allowance at that particular rate? The third one, the fourth one, that way. So these rates are, so rates for capital allowance. So these are the rates. We have number one, capital allowance at the rate of 50% in the first year. Of use and then 25 percent per annum straight line basis from the second year on the remaining balance Number two, capital allowance at the rate of 25% per annum straight line basis Number three, capital allowance the rate of 10% per annum straight line basis number 4 capital allowance at the rate of 33 and a third percent into brackets we call it a third per annum on costs straight line basis so when you talk of the capital allowance these are the rates that we normally use to claim capital allowance on the fixed assets that are used to run to run the business so the next thing that we need to learn is uh, when we talk of the 50 percent and then 25 percent what do we mean and once we understand what we mean then in that case then we look at which are the items do, uh, that we normally give capital allowance at that rate we go to the 25 percent we do the same the 10 percent we do the same 
and that three and that percent or that we do the same so i'm going to start with the first one so i write it as the heading and then we look at what do you mean by it and then which are the items we normally give the capital allowance at that particular rate so come So here we are, the first rate for capital allowance. Capital allowance at the rate of 50% in the first year of use, then 25% per annum straight line basis from the second year on the remaining balance. What do we mean by that? Now, before we look at the items that we give capital allowance at those rates, this is what it means. Uh, it means when you have an item that we are supposed to give the capital allowance at that rate, first year, take 50% of the cost. And when you take that 50% of the cost, when you are determining the taxable income of that year, the taxable income, the income to be charged tax for that particular business, uh, and you are preparing the statement I had indicated here, so the amount you are supposed to come and put here, in relation to that, asset you take 50 percent and when you talk of 50 percent it doesn't matter of when it was acquired if it was acquired at the beginning of the year in the middle of the year one day to the end of the year it doesn't matter as long as it was used in that year you take 50 percent and then that will mean that when you talk of now 20 per, 25 percent per annum straight line basis from the second year now from the second year you'll be taking 25 percent of whatever you mean after you have claimed the 50 percent and then it should be every year per annum per annum means per 12 months so if for example you have reached the second year and an item is sold during the year for example in the second year you use it only for six months because it is disposed of in that case you are going to take 10, 25 percent times six over 12 because the 25 percent is per annum per annum means per 12 months but take note for the first year 50 percent we have then said per annum so in that case going to be 50 percent period without considering the period it was used that would mean if we have an item here if we have an item here uh, let's say it costed a hundred million it costed a hundred million then somebody tell you that it is the one that qualify although we are going to see those items that qualify at that rate and somebody tell you that it qualify at the rate of 50 then 25 the rate that we have indicated there and now ask you can you get the capital allowance of the first year so you come and say ask this person when was it acquired let's say the year we are considering is 2022 the 2022 and then you are told it was acquired on 1st of july 2022 now, 2022 become the first year. So the capital allowance for the first year is going to be equivalent to, we have said, 50% of 100 million without considering that it was used for just part of the year, which will give you the 50 million. So 50 million is the one that you are going to take to the income statement when you're getting the taxable profit and deduct it here in 2022 then if somebody asks you how about the capital allowance of the second year how much is it going to be now the second year must be now the 2023 you'll come and say the capital allowance for the second year which in this case we are talking about the 2023 if it was used the whole of 2023 it is going to be we have said 25 percent per annum on the remaining balance after the first year so how much remained after the first year so the cost was a hundred million the first year capital allowance 50 is what was claimed that means that the remaining balance is 50 million then if you take 25 percent that is going to be 12.5 million so in the 2023 when you are determining the taxable income of the business you'll come and bring it here how about in case somebody asks you about the capital allowance of the third year? The third year in this case that means 2024. How much will it be? In this case we have said 25% straight line from the second year. That means that you take 25% again of 
per annum per annum of the remaining balance after the first year remember the remaining balance is after the first year so you do the same as we did here so the cost was 100 million but the first year we claimed 15 million so minus 50 million so the remaining balance is 50 million so when you take 25 percent that is going to be again 12.5 million so when you are getting the taxable income of the second year you are going to take again 12.5 million of 2024 when you are preparing the statement how about in case somebody tell you now in the fourth year this asset was sold mid the year let's see now we are talking about 2025 it was sold by 30th june of 2025 so how much will be the capital allowance the capital allowance will be that is now for the fourth year and that is supposed to be 2025 is going to be equivalent to 25 percent per annum remember we said per annum means per 12 months per year for 12 months so now that it was sold during the year by that year june 2025 that means that it was only used for six months in that particular year so in this case when you talk of 25 percent per 12 months now for the six months is going to be what you multiply by six over 12 of the remaining balance after the first year Mm -hmm. So the remaining balance of the first year was the cost was 100 million minus what was claimed in the first year, that is 50 million. So you are left with 50 million. So when you take 25% of 6 over 12 times 50 million, this is the amount that you are going to get. So we will have 25%. You multiply by 6 over 12. 6 over 12 and then you multiply by the remaining balance after the first year 50 and that is going to give you 6.25 6.25 million and that is the one that you are going to take to the income statement when determining the taxable profit of the 2025 that is supposed to be the fourth year when you are getting the taxable profit there so take note the reason why we have said times 6 over 12 of 25 is because it was sold during the year of 2025. It was sold by that year, June 25, 25, meaning it was only used for six months. And because you are saying 25% is per annum, then you have to apportion it based on time. So that is what we mean by capital allowance at the rate of 50% in the first year of use and then 25% per annum straight line basis from the second year on the remaining balance. Now, having noted on how we apply the rate of 50% and then 25%, the second question we should be asking ourselves is, which are those items that qualify for capital allowance at that particular rate? So that now, like now we have been using the, ten, the 100 million to explain what we have explained here. Which this item was acquired at 100 million, the one that we should be claiming capital allowance at the rate that we have talked about? Which are those items? So that if you are given like 30 items, you know that this one is supposed to be under this rate. The other ones, maybe they are supposed to be for another rate or they do not qualify for a, any capital allowance. So now we look at the item that qualify for capital allowance at the rate that we have talked about. So we have items qualifying for capital allowance. Uh -huh. at the above rate. What are those items? Items qualifying for capital allowance at the above rates are number one, the following items used in manufacturing the key thing I want you to get from there and these are the ones that we'll be using these are the headings we'll be using to understand is the term manufacturing manufacturing so when a business is doing manufacturing and it incur the cost on the items I'm about to list, then they should claim 
the cap to allowance at the rate of 50% in the first year, then 25% per annum straight line basis from the second year on the remaining balance. These items are A. Factory building. Stroke industrial building. And the costs incurred that assist to use the building. To use factory stock industrial building. Such as we have parking area, sewerage system, railway lines, railway lines. Electricity system, water systems, we have panels, bridges, ETC, among others. So what you are saying is that if you are doing manufacturing and you can see uh, we are calling it the factory building because factory building its purpose is to be used for manufacturing or an industrial building its work is to be used for manufacturing. So when you have the costs that were incurred to put up that building give it give that cost the uh, capital allowance at the rate we have indicated. We didn't stop there but we also said also the costs incurred that assist to use the factory or industrial building. So there are those costs that are incurred in the process of using the, the building or that are incurred in order to support the usage of that particular factory building or industrial building that has been set up. These costs are like parking area. You see, if you set up a factory building and you don't have somewhere somebody can come and park a lorry, where goods can be now loaded into the lorry and be taken to the market, or if it is the raw material can be offloaded, that building cannot be effectively be used. So you may realize you require a parking area. Another one is the sewerage system. So if you if you don't have a sewerage system in the factory, you may find that the waste product may not be eliminated from the factory system. So it will become kind of an issue. Another one are railway system, the electricity system, water system. Tunnels. There are some factories which are usually connected through tunnels so that they can uh, uh, allow people to move from one part of the factory building to another part, uh, part of the factory building or from one factory building to another factory building. Others normally have bridges connecting them. All this is for the purpose of using that particular factory building. All those costs when they are incurred, we normally give them the capital allowance at the rate of 50% in the first year, then 25% per annum straight line basis on the remaining balance from the second year. That is number one under manufacturing. Number two under manufacturing, B. We have the machine used in manufacturing. And machine that assists. To, um, that assists manufacturing including cost in card before the
the use of machines. So we are saying those machines that are used in manufacturing, including costs incurred before use of machine. The key things are these ones. Machines used in manufacturing. Although I'm going to list them in a while. But here we are talking about used in manufacturing, like a processing machine. Processing machine is used to convert the raw material into the finished goods. That is one of the machines that, uh, that is used in manufacturing. Not only that, but also machines that assist. The key thing the assist is assist in manufacturing. That means that these machines are not directly used to convert the raw material into the finished goods, but they help for that process to continue. And here we are going to look at some of those uh, uh, machines, but you can imagine one of them being like a water pump. Water pump is used to pump water into the into the system of the uh, of the of the of the factory. So that means that water pump is not itself used in, to convert the raw material into the finished goods in the manufacturing. But it is yes, without pumping that water, the manufacturing can cannot continue. So in this case, we are saying that those machines that assist in manufacturing also qualify for the rate we have talked about. Not only that, but also cost incurred. The cost incurred before use of those machines. This I'm going to list in a while. But they mean that you are incurring or you incur some cost before you started using a machine. A good example is you can purchase a processing machine. And maybe you purchase a processing machine through importing it. So you didn't find it locally. So you bought it maybe in Europe. Now when you buy that machine, it cannot be of any use. You can be told pay 50 million and you pay. But unless you transport it, it comes into your factory. You install it. It cannot help you. So you may incur 50 million. That is the cost of machine, yes. But now you need to transport. Out of 50, you incur an extra 5 million to transport it. That's 55 million. When you are transporting, you are told by the transport company, you have to insure your machine. Maybe you insure for 2 million. You know, that's 57 million. So, and then when you bring it into your factory, you realize that you need to install it into your factory system so that it can, it can be of use. So you... you Hire an expert to come and install the machine for you. And this person tell you pay 3 million. In total now that is 60 million. So in this case now when you are claiming capital allowance on that machine, you won't, you won't claim on the 50 million only. It will be 50 million plus the 5 million uh, uh, transport plus the 2 million which was incurred insurance plus the 3 million that was incurred to, to install that particular machine. So all those costs are put together and used to create capital allowance on these machines that we have talked about here. So I want to give you examples of these machines. So we say example of these machines are, so these are the one, processing machine, We have water pump, packaging machine, conveyor belts. We have um, treatment plants. Generators, etc., among others. As strong as a machine is used in manufacturing or that assist in manufacturing like this one, you normally give it the rate we have talked about. I also want to give you a list of the expenses that could have been incurred before the machine was used, which you normally add them together when you're claiming capital allowance on that particular machine. So on the same costs in card before use are these are the costs are we have transport insurance loading and offloading costs we have the installation costs testing costs etc among others but the key thing before 
use of those particular machines any. It can also include costs like repair. As long as it is in car before use, we put them together when you are claiming capital allowance at the rate you have talked about, about the, about the machine. But those costs that are incurred after you start using the machine, those do not qualify for capital allowance. We don't include them together with the machine when you are claiming capital allowance. Now, we go to the third uh, items that we normally give capital allowance at the rate of 50, then 25, as we had illustrated. This one is the C. We have borehole, security wall, water tanks, such are the one that we give capital allowance at the rate of 50%, 25% under the manufacturing. So now that we are done with manufacturing, we go to number two. Still, those at the rate that we, have, we had indicated are up there. So these are the following items. Used in farming. The key thing, farming. So if you are doing farming, all our business is doing farming, and it incur the foreign costs. It should claim capital allowance at the rate of 50 percent, then 25, when they are determining the taxable income. What are those items? These are the one under farming. A. We have farmhouse. Now, for the farmhouse, it is very important for you to note that I'll put it into bracket. Note only a third of the costs qualify uh -huh, for partnerships and sole proprietorship. For limited companies, the whole cost qualify. Yeah, so, when you're talking about farming, uh, the first item that qualify for capital allowance at the rate of 50, then 25, is the farmhouse. Farmhouse is where the owner of the business stays when they visit the farm. Uh, when they construct it, when they are claiming capital allowance, if they are doing the farming as partnership business, we are going to look at later what we mean by partnership, and also proprietorship business, a salon, uh, they are supposed to take just a third of the cost. And that is the one that they compute the capital runs on the rate you have talked about. Uh, however, if it is a limited company, don't take a third. Take the whole cost and give it the, the capital allowance at the rate that we have talked about. That was an A under the farming. So we go to B, still under farming. So I'll delete this one. It's a continuation of 50%. Thank mm -hmm. you.